Hi, so I'm just going to talk about expressing your breast milk and why would you need to express? Well, if everything's going really, really well in the first couple of weeks, there really is no need to express unless it's a personal preference. But in the early days, there may be an indication to express, and I'll just go through various different reasons why you may wish to express. Maybe when you're trying to latch the baby, we mentioned before that smell is a big part of feeding for a baby. So um, if you want to just express a little bit of colostrum out before the baby latches, that can assist a deep latch. Another reason you may wish to express is the day that you get the surge of milk, it can be after 72 hours, your breast gets quite full and when your breast gets full it changes the shape of your breast so your baby might have been feeding really well in the hospital you go home your breasts get quite full and all of a sudden your baby is refusing to latch to the breast and that can be a little bit scary so to know what to do in that situation is really important so sometimes just expressing enough milk off just to soften the breast and make it more latchable for the baby is a good idea Another reason you may wish to express your breast milk is if you're separated from your baby, if your baby is born early or premature. Um, and I would just say to you, if you do come into the Rotunda Hospital in premature labour, please ask the staff for an expressing pack. They'll give you a pack and they'll talk you through how to get started with, breast, with expressing within the first hour of the baby being delivered. And that is quite important because you do get 30% more colostrum in the first hour than you do hours two, three, four, five and six. That doesn't mean don't express at hours three, five and six if you're separated from your baby, but it is important to get it initiated as soon as you're able to. And you will be shown and helped with this on the ward. Um, another reason you may wish to express is that we do now have a policy in the hospital um, for antenatal harvesting of colostrum. In the last year this has come on board, before that we had no research to back this up, but a huge study was done in Australia in the last couple of years with a large cohort of women, of antenatal diabetic women. And the study over, was over a couple of years and it did show that expressing colostrum antenatally is safe if it's done properly and if you fit into the inclusion criteria. For some women it may not be safe so it's really important if you are expressing colostrum antenatally that you talk to either your midwife or your obstetrician at your antenatal visit and we recommend it from 38 weeks on. The, it's in this leaflet which you'll get if you ask about expressing antenatally, all the information is in there about who it's safe for, who it's not safe for. Again, please discuss it with your healthcare worker before you um, decide to do that. Let's just start with how to express. It's really important that you've clean hands, so if you gel up your hands when the gel is dry, that's when your hands are clean and you get ready, or you can wash your hands with soap and water. If you're expressing to get volume because you're separated from your baby, it is important to massage the breast first. If you're just expressing to get a little bit of colostrum out to assist baby to latch to the breast, or if your breasts are quite full and you want to soften the areola, there is no need to massage. But again, if you're looking for volume, massage is extremely important. When you go to massage the breast, you can just get your hand like this, and between these two knuckles and this flat part of your hand, start at the top of the breast and just work your way gently around the breast in the direction of the areola, the brown part, gently. Another way is the pads of two fingers, press in and gently massage and go in circles around the breast and then making your circles smaller. And then just if you tap the breast also, that can help the release of oxytocin. So if you just spend about three to four minutes massaging the breast first, the more relaxed you are, the more oxytocin will flow as well. When you are expressing in the early days, you are going to get minimal amounts of colostrum so please don't be disheartened when you see even beads of colostrum on the face of the nipple that's quite normal that doesn't mean that's all that's in there it's just a baby that's feeding effectively will remove more colostrum than hand expressing when you do go to hand express where you put your hand is really important a lot of people mix up the massage with the expressing and they're doing a little bit of everything because it's a new skill it's not something you've ever had to do before but if you could think of it in two different stages massaging when the massaging is finished then hand expressing. If you get your hand in a C shape with your thumb and finger opposite each other. First of all, identify where your ducts are. If you move back from the nipple, usually where the skin changes colour around the areola, that's usually where you'll feel your ducts. If you've got a large areola, it'll usually be where the skin changes colour. If you've got a smaller areola, 
just bring your fingers back a little bit more. Thumb and finger, again, remember are a team and need to be opposite each other. So place your thumb at about 12 o'clock, imagining the areola as a clock, and your three fingers at six o'clock. The first thing that you do is gently push back towards the chest wall. Then bring your thumb and finger together gently. You're going in behind the areola. And you can just give it, do a gentle roll as you're bringing your thumb and finger together. So you go into a rhythm of pushing back and together. Press, compress, press, compress. Then you collect your colostrum. Because it's so, it's so low volume in the early days, we collect it in a syringe. Again, it's a really good idea to get your partner involved with this um, in the early days. Get, watch the videos together so you know you will need a hand with collecting the colostrum until you get used to the skill of this. So when the colostrum comes on to the face of the nipple, you can collect it with the syringe by pulling back on the syringe. You can also collect it by taking the stopper. And again, you'll be shown this on the ward. You've got a wider base to collect into by holding it this way as well. Again, you'll be shown this. When you're hand expressing, it really is important to go back and forward to each breast. Express for about 20 minutes in total. So going back and forward, back and forward, stop at 20 minutes. And frequency of expressing, if you're looking for volume, is very, very important. So if you are separated from your baby and your baby's in the, in the neonatal unit, it is important to express a minimum of eight times in 24 hours. And the reason for that is just to, to stimulate the release of prolactin for your long-term production. So starting early within the first hour is, is very important and frequency of expressing is also hugely important for your ongoing supply. Again, if you express in the first hour, research has shown us that you will get, you can get 120% more milk 14 days later. So what you do initially is very, very important. And again, the frequency of expressing is really important. When your volume has increased, you can move on to a pump. And again, you'll be shown how to use the pump on the ward. When you're collecting your colostrum, again, in the early days, you'll be collecting into a syringe. How you store your milk is really important and how we transport the milk to the neonatal unit. It is really important that your syringe is labelled with your baby's identification label and the time and date that you've expressed. Again, we're keeping it clean. We put the lid on it to keep it clean. It's labelled. We put it into a Ziploc bag and we'll bring it to the neonatal unit as soon as possible. Babies that are in the neonatal unit, we suggest that, or research has shown us that really 48 hours in the fridge is the maximum amount of time for colostrum for preterm babies. Uh, three months in a drawer freezer and six months in a chest freezer. For a term baby, and this is in the HSE booklet as well, breast milk can be stored in a fridge at four degrees or less for up to five days. Obviously, if it's day two or day three, day four, that's better, but it can be stored up to five days, not in the door of the fridge, in the back of the fridge at four degrees or less. And it can be stored again for three months in a drawer freezer or six months in a chest freezer for a term uncompromised baby.